G'day viewers. So I'm back at a job that I did probably about 12 months ago and um, I've been really keen to get back to this one because when I finish this job, which has all been set up uh, to make this home pretty much self-sufficient with their energy consumption, uh, they didn't have this, which is the Volvo electric car. Beautiful car, absolutely beautiful. So it's fully electric and uh, this was all part of the plan with this job so i'll just give you a quick summary of what this is all about um, and then i'll take a little bit of a deep dive for those that are interested in the finer details so what we've got here is uh, a tesla power wall setup uh, and that's the gateway for the tesla power wall and the power wall is over there so we've got a battery, we've got our solar edge inverter, which is only five kilowatt, and this is a pretty decent sized home with a fa full family in it. And we've got our wall box EV charger, which is right there. And that plugs into the electric car right there. And the whole idea of this job was to make their home uh, self-sufficient as far as uh, electricity is concerned so their power consumption so and uh, also for them to be able to charge their electric car uh, so what what they've got is they've got their inverter and then they're storing their excess energy during the day into the power wall which with the Tesla power wall on single phase also gives them the ability to remain off-grid indefinitely if there's a power outage um, and they've got their electric vehicle. So with, their, with the electric vehicle, they can charge that from their solar, um, or they can charge it from the grid, or they can charge it from the battery. But in this instance, what they're doing is the car pretty much remains plugged in all the time when it needs to be. And uh, the system we're using is the Heart Charge HQ app. Um, and what that will do is once it realizes that the battery is full on the power wall and the house is being supplied and there's surplus power getting exported to the grid it then diverts that power to the electric vehicle the Volvo so they're effectively supplying their own house with all their required energy needs and they've completely eliminated their fuel bill um, with this car obviously that's it's a large family there are a couple of other cars here um, but this is the main one and this one costs them nothing to run uh, they're charging it for free using their own solar power um, which is just awesome that's yeah and this is pretty much what all your homes are going to look like in the future um, I just read the other day that Victoria is banning natural gas connections to all new homes. They're not allowed to anymore. Um, so this just totally makes sense. You're using solar power to power your home and you're using solar power to power your electric vehicle. If there's a grid outage, you're immune from it because with the Tesla power wall, you can, like I said, go off grid. Um, so that's the nuts and bolts of it. That's a bit of a, a glimpse into what family homes will look like in the future uh, with electric vehicles and solar power um, it just makes perfect sense and uh, obviously the uh, running costs of an electric vehicle are far less than what they are for a regular internal combustion engine um, as far as maintenance and all that sort of thing goes because there's far few moving moving parts um, so yeah no oil changes, uh, even brake wear is uh, minimal because the electric cars use regeneration. So they actually use the electric motor to slow them down, um, which repowers the battery as you're slowing down. All right, so that's the nuts and bolts of it. Fully self-sufficient home. Um, now I'll take a bit of a deep dive from the beginning. So as mentioned with this job, uh, we had an original solar system, which this is uh, the group of bluer panels here. And um, unlike many other upgrades, 
I've retained these panels and uh, utilized them on the same new inverter and that was possible because of solar edge and the use of optimizers so this group of panels here was 12 295 watt Canadian panels uh, which gave us a 3.5 kilowatt array size and I've added these ones here which is to the east and these ones here which are to the west so we've got a good spread of power from when the sun comes up early in the morning midday and then late into the afternoon uh, now the other benefit of having solar edge on here as I've mentioned before in other videos is the optimizers so optimizers allow us to have uh, multiple orientations different size panels which was key in this job uh, because these are 295 watt where are we oops 295 and these are 410 but they're all operating together which you can only do with solar edge um, and the use of the optimizers um, so we've got shading over here from the east and a little bit to the north and a bit to the west as well um, but this total amount now is 9.69 kilowatts on a 5 kilowatt inverter and again that is a um, unique feature of solar edge with that oversizing and you might think well why would you do that well you do it because there's many benefits one of them being in overcast or cloudy conditions uh, you still be able to produce really good power because although you've got almost a 10 kilowatt array you might only be getting five kilowatts due to clouding and so forth um, so you've got that benefit there uh, you've got the benefit of having um, a good amount of power panels facing the east and the north and the west so all orientations are covered with good amount of panels which means you're going to get really good power uh, throughout the whole course of the day um, so that was basically the challenge I had on the roof uh, and um, it was quite a challenge but again because of solar edge it made it possible and we were able to uh, use those existing panels and make it all tie together all right so that's that's what was going on 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 the roof charger the EV charger the wall connector um, this has some smarts in it which talks to the charge HQ app that I mentioned and that will piggyback off the smarts of the Tesla gateway and uh, by using CTs it can well current transformers which clip around the cables it can measure uh, the power going um, into the battery into the car and out to the grid and that's how it works out when to start charging the car when to start charging the power wall battery um, and just manage the whole flow of electricity so basically when the car needs charging it can remain plugged in all the time yeah so that's what it looks like in there that plugs in there and it does its thing and um, that will just remain plugged in all the time and um, it will charge using surplus solar uh, or you can command it to charge from the grid um, and when I say surplus when it was, when I say it will charge from solar so whatever it's exporting to the grid it can redirect that to the car um, so that will be a minimum amount but right up to the maximum amount of 7 kilowatts um, which is what this one's capable of um, so whatever is spare it will redirect it's not a hard you know two and a half kilowatts it starts and then turns off if it's below that it'll send to the car whatever it can whether it be large or small uh, so you're capturing all that energy um, but you can also from your app um, command the car to fast charge from the grid or from the battery uh, whichever you choose um, so if you can imagine like even in a grid outage so go full extreme if you want like full prepper mentality 
uh, massive power outage, petrol stations have ran out of fuel, or because of the power outage you can't buy fuel, which is true, you know, petrol stations can't serve you fuel while there's a power outage, but you can charge your electric car from your own solar at home, you don't need petrol. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of benefits to having that sort of setup um, with that independence and uh, obviously huge cost savings. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Bit of a look into what most homes will be like in the future. Solar power, battery and electric vehicle all makes perfect sense. Cheers guys, hit me up if you have any questions, thanks.